to remind you of hi happy sunday happy pride happy june happy day oh happy day yeah i wonder do you sing along with that opening song if you don't you should really try it makes me so happy half the love and light eddie watkins jr shout out Good afternoon or morning or evening whenever you're watching this on the rewatch. I know a lot of people are rewatching this these days because they are out and a boot, boot and a boot. Everybody's out and about feeling the summer, feeling the expression of life that is goodness that is everywhere present in this June month of pride. I'm knowing there are parades going on everywhere. Everybody is just doing their, letting their flag fly, whatever it is. Love is love is love. You know, that's what we believe here at the house of love and light. Hello. Hello. I, it looks like a rainbow threw up behind me. <laughs> this is my studio. So I rearranged everything. I think I told you last week, but I'll tell you again, because why not? I rearranged everything because I was like, you know what? It's summertime, it's fresh. Let's bring everything into this one room. I've got my books in here, my art in here, my music in here, everything. And I'm just feeling so surrounded by the creative force and source of love and light as we enter into this beautiful hour, which you know what the, the topic is today is boom, bloom, okay? Because you know what? It's like the explosiveness of this June bloom, boom, life, love, light, beauty, power, grace. That is you. That is me. That is this moment expressing right now. That is my art. That is my music. That is your life. That is everything. So uh, I'm really excited because today we're going to focus a lot on the lotus flower, which I find to be absolutely fascinating. I learned a lot about it and I'll tell you about that in my talk. And I'm so glad you're here live, Lisa. Let me say hi to everybody who said hello in the chat. I know it's not a huge crowd, but you know what? Everybody that's here really matters to me. And that it's never the size, it's always the energy. And our energy as we connect here will attract more people to come in. You'll see, you'll see people will start rolling up on in here. And then again, like I said, I know people are gonna rewatch. So I'm so happy you're here. Jen coming in from Florida. Imagine Florida lighting up. We've got Donna Davis on the road to come visit me right now. Woohoo! thanks for checking in, baby girl. Um, um, Lisa and Joanne, Stephanie at work, Sandy, my love, Jenny. I know that um, we are all here in the spirit of love and light. We are all here to remind ourselves to let's stick to the mission, which is to nourish with some spiritual food for this hour, to uplift you, make you feel good and inspire you to be your highest and best you. I pulled a card from the prosperity affirmations from um, Edwin Gaines and it says, I choose now to live in a world of peace, power and prosperity. I want you to say that with me. I choose now. I choose now to live in a world, to live in a world of peace, power, and prosperity, peace, power, and prosperity, peace, power, and prosperity. Hey, Pam, good to see you. Everybody, I, I invite you. Hello, Linda. Thank you for popping on. I hope that you will all share this on your page or invite some people in with us. We're going to sing because we know that singing does what? Triggers our parasympathetic nervous system. We take these deep breaths. We get our voice moving. We get the energy moving. That's what we're doing here on a Sunday afternoon. 
afternoon. I am opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the one. I am opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the one. I am opening. Sing it with me. I am opening. I am opening. I am opening. From the top. I am opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the one. I am opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the one. I am opening. I am opening. I am opening. I am opening. One more time. I am opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the one i am opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous love light of the one i am opening i am opening i am opening i am Take a deep breath here. We're going to enter into some prayer as we go and we sing because this uh, because this day is all about the bloom, boom, bloom, boom, bloom, boom, bloom, the explosive nature of life. I thought, of course, we have to go to the garden. On Wednesday nights, we go to the book garden every Wednesday night at 730. But right now we're going to enter into prayer with this beautiful song by our beloved Eddie Watkins Jr. So I invite you to take a deep breath. me. You can sing this with me or you can just bask in the beauty of this song. We're going to sing it once through, then I'll give you a treatment. I know I miss you too. All right, so I'll give it, I'll give us a spiritual mind treatment and then I will sing it again. Here we go. There's a garden. There is a dreams come true mm -hmm. a beautiful garden where God's grace blooms there is a garden where everything grows a beautiful garden where love is sown and in this place and in this place That you're dreaming of. There is a garden where dreams come true. Beautiful garden. That garden is you. Breathing deeply right now, I recognize the garden that is growing, that is growth, that is everywhere present, the garden of life. recognize this source, this energy that grows all things, that is present in all things. I bring my awareness to the knowing that this source, this force, this energy of life and light and love and peace and joy is in each and every person who hears this message today. And it is in me. I know this power is in my voice. And I wrap my love around it with these words saying, thank you, God. Thank you for this opportunity, for this internet. Thank you, God, for the coming together of like minds to create even a stronger consciousness of good and awareness of the good. Blowing it up, booming it up, blowing it up, blowing that good, exploding that good into more good, yeah. So I declare for each and every person here, a goodness, an awareness of the goodness, a peace that washes over, an acceptance that washes over, a beautiful blooming that is happening as our lives, each and every one of us, a beautiful life filled 
with power, peace, and prosperity. I say, thank you, God. Thank you, good, for the love, for the joy, for the connection of this house of love and light. Thank you for the house of love and light. Amen. And so it is. Oh. Let's sing one more time. There is a garden where dreams come true, a beautiful garden where God's grace blooms. There is a garden where everything grows, a beautiful garden where love is sown. inside out with some voice. Oh, yeah. Go for a moment into a space of recognizing what you're grateful for. Just take a minute to bring to mind the things that you're grateful for. And we'll talk about it in a minute. Just, just think about it. Have you thought about it? Have you thought about the things that you're grateful for right now? Are you discussing it with whoever you're with right now? Or can you speak it into the room that you're in? Or can you put it in the comments and tell me what you're grateful for? And I'll tell you some things that I'm grateful for. And we'll work on that gratitude. We'll massage the gratitude muscle in our hearts. I am so grateful for this day. I'm so grateful for yesterday. I had a day of just profound power chilling. I laxed out. I chillaxed big time. I'm so grateful to know when it's time to do that. I'm so grateful to be able to do that. I'm so grateful for my partner who likes to do that with me when she's off her work day. I'm so grateful for my friends that are there and present for me. I'm so grateful for House of Love and Light. We've been doing it for three years grateful for my ministerial teacher and my ministerial training. AJ says, my peaceful life. Yeah, isn't it nice when it's so peaceful around here? I'm grateful for the garden that AJ is growing. I'm grateful for the home that we are blessed to share. I'm grateful for the animals. I'm grateful for my animals' health. Had to take Tiki to the vet this week. I'm grateful I could take Tiki to the vet this week. All right, let's hear some of your gratitudes. I'm going to share them out loud. Sandy says, grateful for washing machines and dryers. Amen and hallelujah. Lisa says, grateful for posies, for new jobs, better schools, for summer. I, I'm so grateful for teachers to get summers off. All right. So Jen says, I'm grateful for my home, spiritual community. I love your community. It was blessed to go down there last weekend. My musical family there. Such a beautiful musical family there. My home family. My wife, puppies, brothers, sisters, moms continued good luck, good health. I love that. I loved hearing about your mom last weekend, Jen. Jenny Scott says, getting my chores done, making eggplant parm. That sounds wonderful. I would love to share that with you. Sunshine and blooming. Friends to visit. Yes. I'm so grateful you get to visit me tonight. Donna's coming to visit me. I know Tiki had to go to the doctor. So I love these. I love cards. I love card decks. I have them. I have so many decks in my house. <laughs> I collect them. And I wanted to pull from Rumi today. I don't know why. I felt like pulling from the Rumi deck. Um, this is a Melinda Fairchild oracle. And it was crazy when I when I pulled this because I felt like 
it's interesting. It was very interesting to pull this card um, today because of what we're talking about. And I pulled divine discontent, divine discontent. And you might've heard that phrase before, um, but I'm going to read you a little bit. I'm not going to read you the whole thing in the book here, but I love it because the Lotus, of course we know grows in the, you know, mud or poop or doo doo. Okay. Okay. So divine discontent. Winter falls upon us so spring can bring new growth. Cry the tears, allow the longing. Sadness brings surrender and a deep desire to feel free. And this is all talking about this sort of like conscious dissatisfaction with a life that is shallow, with a life that is surface, with a life that is not connected to the divine. It's talking about this deep call for the divine in all things. They say, seek the divine in all things when you cannot, when the power of lesser gods has you in its grip, acknowledge it, bear witness to it. Do not chastise. Instead, be truthful. Let your heart break and lie prostrate on the floor, hands clutching, head bowed, as though only your sadness could stir the heart of the divine beloved into a descent of succor and grace, saving you from a life far too bland for your exquisite epicurean palate. Don't misinterpret pain. Pain is the growing, the discontent divine growing within you is the beginning. It's not the destiny. The purpose is to lead you to your greatest connection with divinity, your con greatest connection with your spirit. Don't be scared. This is a holy adventure. This is a holy adventure. Say aloud, I release that which is not worthy for my soul to feast upon. I release that which is not worthy for my soul to feast upon. It's a feast. It's a divine feast that we're having here, okay? And let's just all know that we can and will feast with the, div the divine inside. And that's what we do here at House of Love and Light. It's like, a, it's like an hour of, of feasting. Mm, yes. Linda says, I'm grateful for my friends, for my apartment, for bed, for chocolate. Yes, yes. Oh, I'm so glad y'all are popping in and coming to see me here at House of Love and Light. So now I'm going to give you a message that I've been working on. And this is going to be a fun little um, a fun little chant that I did create for this, this Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Again, I was thinking about that explosive way that the bloom happens. Boom, bloom, to the sun from the dark side of the moon. Boom, bloom, to the sun from the dark side of the moon. Move into the groove of letting loose to be the best you bloom through all the beauty, all the muck. Don't get stuck being too moody. You can walk on to the next big truth. Growing and unfolding as your life is exploding into something even bigger than you dream. Yeah, it may seem a bit too challenging, but you have everything you need to break through, break through, break through, break through, and boom, bloom to the sun the dark side of the moon boom sing it with me bloom a toot the sun from the dark side of the moon move and do the groove of letting loose to be the best you bloom through all the beauty all the muck don't get stuck in being too moody you can walk on to the next big truth a growing and unfolding as your life exploding into something even bigger than your dream bigger than it may seem to be too challenging but you have everything you need to break through boom to break through boom boom bloom a toot the sun from the dark side of the moon boom Bloom, oh, from the sun to the dark side. Boom, 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 bo
Fun little ditty, yeah? Little ditty wrote for you? Wrote you a little ditty. Here is a quote to start with. A Buddhist proverb, the lotus flower blooms most beautifully from the deepest and thickest mud. Mm. So we know this, right? We know that the lotus grows from the dark places, right? We know this. No mud, no lotus. Wonderful song, wonderful quote, wonderful Piece, but you know, here's a fun fact. Here's a fun fact that you might not know. Sure, the lotus needs the mud, but even more than that, the lotus needs the sun. Okay? The lotus grows toward the sun. Okay? It grows out of the muddy water to the surface. So while we hear in beautiful, you know, spiritual circles, you know, the mud is the lesson of the lotus. I'm here to tell you right now, I'm here to tell you today that our lesson is about the sun. Okay. The lotus grows because of the sun. The mud is a part of our lives that challenges us. You know, the difficult relationships, the fearful thoughts, the dark moments, but the growth comes from reaching out, reaching up, reaching toward the sun and allowing that sun to shine on us. Can I hear an amen? Can I hear a hallelujah? Okay. And the sun to me represents in this metaphor, the practices of new thought. Okay. The practices of spiritual path, the, sp the practices of being in a consciousness of deciding what to decide, deciding what to choose, choosing what you choose, saying, I am at choice. I am recognizing that I am at choice. I am conscious of being conscious. I am not just the intellectual man. Okay. I am the spiritual man. I am the ascended man. I am the spiritual man woman, person, whatever you claim as your gender. Okay. The Lotus is you, you are the Lotus and you are reaching and you are aware and this constant reaching to the light. That's what I want to focus our attention on today. Okay. What is the light? What are these teachings? Well, at the root of these teachings is this knowingness and this connectedness to all things, that quantum field of infinite possibilities that's everywhere present, that's available for tapping in and tuning in and turning on. And we know that we curate our reality. We see what we are. Our frequency determines our experience. But we also know that we're moving and changing and shifting in a space of consciousness of so many others around us too. So there's this paradox here, right? Like, like that we've got to, we've got our own realities and at the same time we are one. So when I sing boom, bloom, what I mean is breaking through, breaking through to the sun, which is what we are doing here. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Hey, Rick Taylor, pop it on. Hey, my brother. Okay. So check it out. I'm going to tell you just a few other facts, interesting facts about the Lotus. Okay. Because I think they're going to be cool to use as this metaphor for the spiritual journey. So one of the things, um, about the Lotus is called thermal regulation. In other words, the Lotus flowers possess this ability to regulate their temperatures. Okay. So they can raise their temperatures up. They can raise their own temperatures up by 11 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees Fahrenheit above the temperature that they're around, which, uh, which helps to attract pollinators and aids in the fertilization process. Okay. Regulation. This is, this is interesting, right? Cause regulation, what is this word that we're hearing all over the place in spirit in, um, in psychological ways, you're hearing this term dysregulation. You're hearing all about dysregulation right now, right? And dysregulation is like mood shifts, angry outbursts, anxiety, depression, shame, substance misuse. Anybody know about all this self-harm, even suicidal thoughts. Okay. This is when we're dysregulated when we're like, okay, I need to regulate myself. Well, guess what? The Lotus knows how to regulate itself and you know how to regulate yourself. And it's, it's, you know how we do it with our consciousness, with what I'm talking about, with what we choose to choose. So yes, we can all fall into emotional dysregulation. 
We can have a disagreement with someone. We can get triggered. We can have fear come up, whatever it is that causes that when we consciously go, okay, I'm dysregulated now, which means I'm out of balance. I feel like I may do or say something that I don't, that's more of a reaction. That's more of that secondary causation. That's more of like living in, living in uh, the relative, as they call it in, in religious science, what I'm learning in ministerial school, as opposed to living from a first cause when you're feeling dysregulated, you're reacting instead of responding, right? So spiritually we can get into regulation, regulate ourselves by self soothing. It's so funny because my little chihuahua will get so upset. And I always say to her self soothe Tiki, self soothe Tiki, self soothe. <laughs> So the first thing that I always go to when I'm learning how to regulate myself and be like the Lotus, notice my inner Lotus is to breathe deeply. Let's take some breaths right now. You see how easy that is. Anybody can do it anywhere, anytime in the traffic, in the line, at the doctor's office, waiting for the diagnosis at the funeral, at the birth, at the, at the big thing, at the small thing, you can breathe. Everybody breathe. And let it be deep. Let it be big. Let it fill you. How beautiful that we are breathing with the universe. The universe is breathing us. Breathing is always a wonderful way to self-soothe and to regulate, to be like that lotus. Journaling, something I don't do enough of. I do not do enough of it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to tell on myself. I was hoping that I would start more this year and I really, I really just don't, but it's because my mind works so fast, not as fast as my hands, but I know that writing with your hands, there's all kinds of cool things that are proven about how, when you write something down with your hand, it connects to your brain, right? It connects to your heart. It connects to you. So I encourage you go grab yourself that old journal, crack it open and start writing it out, writing your feelings. I do journal gratitudes every day. Every single day I journal gratitudes, have a good cry. The other day I had a cry. It was so good. It was so good. It was like one of those Florida rains that just comes. I just cried and then it was over. And it was just like this regular, I regulated immediately. Um, listen to music. Come on, turn on some Amy Steinberg music. I mean, my stuff is so regulating. It will definitely lift your spirits. It will definitely help you to come back to center. Meditation. We all know about meditation. What is meditation? Sit down and shut up. That's it. You don't need to look at a flame. You don't need to sit and cross legged. Just sit down and be quiet. It's really hard to do. The head might not be quiet, but as long as you're quiet and you're sitting quietly, you will experience regulation. You will experience a soothing positive self-talk, man. I, if we talk to others the way we talk to ourselves, oh my God, I am so hard on myself. When I can positive self-talk, that is really helpful for regulation for me. I'm okay. All is well. Everything's going to be okay. It's all, all okay. We're going to get through this. I just burped on the truth. <laughs> physical contact. Sometimes we're alone. So we could just even hug ourselves. You know what I mean? We could just even touch ourselves, feel that sensation of touch, give yourself a massage. Or if you have a partner, reach out, say, I need a hug. I do that all the time to my partner. Can you just hug me right now? Can you just touch me? We'll be lying there and I'm like, just, just touch me. Just a little touch. Sometimes even holding your own hand. You ever hold your own hand? It can feel so good to hold your own hand. Do it. Exercise. Of course, I've always said I've been up and down the 12 steps so many times. I don't need to go to the gym, but boom, boom. Hey, but seriously though, exercise for me, that's walking. It's really walking. And then I also have a little like 12 minute, um, routine that I got from my personal trainer for the first year in pandemic. I had this awesome personal trainer, Lulu Rivera. If you're looking for one, she's a friend of mine on Facebook. She is amazing. She works, you know, over zoom or in person. She's out of the Atlanta area. She's amazing. And then of course, mindfulness, which mindfulness is just becoming aware, becoming aware of being aware, which is what really this whole teaching is about, right? Okay. That was a lot. I know that was a lot, but I just thought that that was so interesting that the Lotus knows how to regulate itself and that we are that Lotus. Okay. Here's another cool thing that the Lotus does. It's self-cleaning. It has leaves that clean itself. The leaves of the lotus plant have a self-cleaning mechanism. 
So due to the presence of microscopic wax crystals on the leaf surface, water droplets roll off, carrying the dirt and debris, leaving the clay, roll off. It all just rolls off the lotus. The lotus go poop. And puts the wax and the things roll off. There is a power in you that is your wax. Okay. That power, that presence, that understands all things, that power works and it, and it, it will let things roll off. Okay. And you know, uh, Ernest Holmes. Oh wait, where's, where's my Ernest Holmes quote? Did I, did I not make a, yeah, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Okay. So here's from Ernest Holmes. There's a power around you that knows and that understands all things. This power works like the soil. It receives the seeds of your thought and at once begins to operate upon it. It will receive whatever you give into it and will create for you and throw back at you whatever you think into it. To me, that's, that's knowing that we have that ability to self clean. We have that ability to let things roll off of us. We plant that idea that I am that Lotus. I am open. I am available for spirit to be my wax spirit. Be my wax right now. Be that bubble around me, knowing that I am safe. I am cared for and that anything that is not going to, uh, fill me up or uplift me or even change me. Sometimes I can experience pain or change and that's okay too, but let it, let me use it all. God use me and let me use it. Can I hear another amen? I'm feeling like I am feeling spirit right now so much. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you for being here, everybody. Oh, may we exist like a lotus at home in the muddy water. Thus we bow to life as it is. May we exist like a lotus at home in the muddy water. Okay. Yeah. The mud, the water's muddy, but we're on the surface. We've gone toward the sun and we bow to life as it is. You know, namaste means we bow, we bow to life. Namaste. The divine in me recognizes, honors the divine in you and how explosive you are. So let's sing again. Let's sing. Boo. Blue. From the sun to the dark side of the moon. Boom. Bloom. Going to the sun from the dark side of the moon. Boom. Listen, the lotus is amazing. The lotus that has seeds that can survive for centuries. Now, what I take from that in you and the lotus in you and noticing the lotus in you is that the seeds that were planted for you, whether it was when you were a kid, dreams that you had, they're still there. They're still there. They can survive anything. They can survive all of your, um, troubles and discord. You know, we, we just watched that really hard to watch movie called to Leslie. Has anybody seen it? It's a really intense movie and it's about an alcoholic and you see her going through those last, that like hitting bottom and, and, and coming through to the other side. And it is an awesome, I mean, amazing acting and it's hard to watch, especially if you've been in the rooms of recovery at all, or you know about alcoholism, you know about addiction and recovery it's a powerful movie and I encourage you to check it out if you'd like to. Um, but what I love about it is that it's like those seeds inside of us survive even through, even as we try to beat ourselves up with all the abuses that we do with addiction, with all the things that's still living there inside the spirit is never gone. That desire for life, that goodness. Okay. So Lotus flowers, I've got a couple more facts about Lotus flowers. Um, okay. So bioluminescence, some species of lotus flowers exhibit bioluminescence, a phenomenon in which they emit a soft glow in the dark. Come on. This feature is certain pigments. It creates a magical shift in the uh, magical. It's magical in the nighttime. Okay. So what does that say? Of course, that just says shine, shine, even in the dark, even in the dark times, notice your Lotus, your inner Lotus wants to shine, wants to turn on the light. Even when things are tough, even when things are dark, we can make that choice to make that choice. 
one more fact, or there's a couple more facts, I think. Um, seed dispersal. Lotus flowers have a unique method of seed dispersal. Once the flowers have bloomed and the petals have falling, fallen, the seed port pod forms. As the pod dries, it develops small holes that release the seeds, which fall into the water and can be carried away by currents to new locations for germination. I thought that was very interesting. What I thought that was is that you're making your choices. You're doing your things. I'm doing house of love and light right now, right? Like this is my choice to like be creative in my home and to, you know, speak spiritual truths and see who it affects. But what this is doing, it's like that ripple effect. It's sending out. I don't know what this is going to do for even just one of you. That's going to change your mind. That's going to then again, change someone else's mind. And it's going to just keep going out there. So as we germinate, as we grow our own consciousness, and as we practice being that Lotus, right? Being that reaching toward the sun, opening up, keeping our waxy, spirit, you know, to just let things fall off of us and shine our light. Even in the dark, we are affecting everybody around us. We can disperse these seeds all over, right? It's such a beautiful metaphor. My gosh, no wonder the Lotus flower is always seen as this spiritual thing. Cause there's so many wonderful lessons of the Lotus. And finally, the last thing about the Lotus that I want to share was that Lotus comes in this huge range of colors. It's white, red, pink, yellow, blue. Okay. So come on now. Come on now. Pride, the rainbow, you know, white lotuses can, can represent purity while red lotuses can symbolize love, compassion. Lotus flowers play a vital role in maintaining an ecological balance in aquatic ecosystems. They provide shade and shelter for various organisms, help regulate water temperature, and contribute to water purification by absorbing excess nutrients. I don't know why this moves me so much, but um, this morning I was at Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles with, uh, virtually obviously, with Reverend Dr. Keith Cox, who I adore, and he was talking about those who those who stood up for the Stonewall, those trans folks, black trans folks, trans folks of color, um, Marsha P. Marsha, I want to say Marsha P. Washington. I should know these names. There's uh, lots of people that that stood up. That's why we have pride. But if you think about the times, were so challenging. The times have been so challenging for for LGBTQ plus. Uh, you know, for the queer community, it's been challenging forever, right? For, for our whole lifetime. And so to see these pride parades and all this pride everywhere, I mean, my Facebook, it's like June threw up pride all over me. You know what I mean? Like everything's a rainbow. And, you know, I just want to say like, it's the ultimate Lotus. It's the ultimate Lotus, the ultimate divine discontent. We are not going to be hiding anymore. We're not going anywhere. That's what they said at Stonewall. They stood up and they said, we are not going anywhere. We're here. We're queer and we're not going anywhere. Like that's it. Okay. And so that is a, that is just a metaphor though. Again, it's another metaphor for be you, be out, be proud. And I know it's scary. It's absolutely scary right now just to exist in this world. It is so scary. And that was the other thing that Reverend Keith talked about today was, was kindness. We're seeing people be so unkind all around us, but guess what we do? We choose to hold the high watch and to be kind anyway. And do I falter? Oh my gosh. I falter in my very own family. That's where I falter the worst is with my mom or with my partner. I'll say something so unkind and then I'll have to stop and be like, whoa, that was so unkind. And if I'm being unkind in my relationships, how can I expect that the world is going to be kind? So I have to practice and you have to practice. We have to practice being kind, not only to others, but to ourselves. Can I hear an amen? Move into the groove of letting loose. Be the best you bloom through all the beauty, all the muck. Don't get stuck being too moody. You can walk to the next big truth, growing and unfolding as your life that is exploding into something even bigger than your dream. It may seem to be a bit too challenging, but you have everything you need to break through. You have everything you need to break through. Sing it with me. We go boom. Bloom, 
it feels good. To the sun from the dark side of the moon, boom, better to be bloom, yeah. To the sun from the dark side of the moon, boom, gonna boom, a bloom, a baby, baby, Move into the groove of a letting loose to be the best you bloom through all the beauty, all the muck. Uh, don't get stuck and be a moody. You can walk on to the next big truth. A groom with an unfolding as your life that is exploding into something even bigger than you can dream. It may seem a bit too challenging, but you have everything you need to break through. Boom. The sun from the dark side of the moon, boom, boo do ba boom, yeah. To the sun from the dark side of the moon. I loved that talk. I hope you did too. <laughs> Thanks for letting me give you that little talk there. Thanks for being here with me. Um, and, uh, I just want to say, if you've stuck with me for this whole hour, thank you so much. Yes, that's right. A Lotus painting will be coming on for sure. So I want to say, I want to say thank you so much to everyone who comes to House of Love and Light, who gives to House of Love and Light, who spends time with House of Love and Light. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Whenever I get, you know, I got an offering today out of the blue. B-L-U-E, the big loving universal energy. Um, thank you so much, Joanne. I'm so glad you're chilling with me. Um, so I, um, yeah, anytime an offering comes in, my heart just lights up. So you can give anytime. You don't have to just give right now. If you're listening to my music driving down the road, I know Katrina's done that before. I've gotten like a $20 donation or something, you know, here and there from people just saying, you know what, I'm listening to your music on Spotify a lot. Here's a contribution. Thank you for doing you. Um, and I really appreciate those, those offerings. I cannot tell you how much it means to me. It's like, and I just trust, I trust in the universe because God is my source. I trust that creativity will always guide me and um, I just sold this this beautiful painting that's behind me which is wonderful and that you know I mean that's going that's gonna pay my bills you know <laughs> like, and you just keep going you keep doing what you love and the money will come I know that so feel free to paypal.me slash house of love and light or at amy-steinberg-5 on Venmo everything is so gratefully gratefully and lovingly ex accepted and joyfully used and reused to keep creating to keep creating things like House of Love and Light, to keep creating things like my art and music. And I am in ministerial school. So of course, every dollar that you give me goes toward my ministerial school, <laughs> which I'm going to be a religious science minister. And I'm super, super, super grateful for that. So upcoming, we're going to have another Sunday in June, which will be a luscious in on the 18th. I'm super excited about these just, you know, I'm not doing books of the month or anything like that. We're just doing gatherings where we just chit chat and I talk about all the stuff that I'm learning and all the stuff that I'm processing in my life and in these teachings. So I hope that you're getting a lot out of it. I'm going to, I know I had said, um, I think maybe at the end of May or I don't know when I said it, but I said I was going to stop doing this and I've decided not to stop doing this, even if there's just six of us here or 10 of us here. Hi, Jennifer Spencer. Much love to you, my sister. You know, however many of us are here, I'm going to keep doing this at least twice a month. Um, continuing through July and August. July 17th is my 50th birthday. If anybody wants to send me presents, I'll give you my address. I love presents. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's going to be what we're doing. So I have a few more things for you today. I have astrology with Lorelai. I have my TikTok tidbits and a tool of the week. So please stick around for this last, this last little bit of our time together. Thanks for listening to me speak and for being here with me. I love you so much. Here's Lorelai. Full moon. Hello, my brothers and sisters of the House of Love and Light. Wow, what a powerful cosmic weather we are journeying through now. 
Number one, we're in the Sagittarius full moon. And remember, at a full moon, everything is accentuated. So what is Sagittarius? Sagittarius is a belief in that life is good. Sagittarius is that the universe always has our back. Sagittarius is there's a pony in there somewhere. So talk about an opportunity to really feel the optimism and enthusiasm of this adaptable fire sign. Now, the big news is that on Monday, Venus, the planet of love, the planet of what we value and appreciate, the planet of what brings us pleasure, which has been in cancer for the last month. So that means that all the safety and security issues were up, all the mommy issues, um, feeling vulnerable, taking care of your own emotional well-being, and maybe wanting to be rescued or feeling helpless, reactive, and defensive. Those are also cancer attributes. It's all a choice, right? It's about giving voice to all of it, I believe. I don't think we can have the high side of the nurturing, caring, mothering energy of cancer if we don't own the reactive and defensive energy as well. Well, now Venus is in Leo, the fixed fire sign of Leo. So talk about a reconnection to your heart, a reconnection to the child within, to the innocence of, of the soul of who you are. It reminds me of the Gayatri prayer, you who are the source of all power, whose rays illuminate the world, illuminate also my heart so that it can do your work. And what's interesting, and we'll be talking more about this, Venus is actually gonna retrograde from July until September, and it'll be in Leo. She will be in Leo for four months. Usually Venus is only in a sign for three weeks to a month, but it will actually be four months that Venus will be in Leo. So here is an opportunity to reconnect to that childlike wonder and innocence of who you really are, and that part of you that just wants to love and be loved. You know, with open arms, love me world and I'll love you back. So my shirt says, love everything. And until we connect, I wish you blue skies, green lights, and lucky stars. Is she the best? I mean, she is the best astrologer ever. We love her so much. Thank you so much, Lorelai. My Venus is in Leo. So I don't know what that means, but I'm excited that it's going to be in my Venus Leo sign for four months or whatever, but it's going to be retrograde. I don't know what that means. Probably means I'm going to be falling in love with myself or something like that because I feel that coming on. I feel a lot of self-love coming through me as of late. Um, yeah, love everything. And, you know, that is one of James's teachings is love everything. Uh, forgive everyone. Love only. Love only. Forgive everything and remember who you are. That's what my ministerial teacher's you know, mission statement is of the Global Truth Center. So I love that. And I, I adopt that as my own. Love only, forgive everything, and remember who you are. So I hope that for you. Okay, so my TikTok is a little mixture of a few things. Um, I wanted to show my love of pride. So, and also show my, you know, I liked this, this, this fabulous boy who's in the first video because this is really important to learn what he's gonna teach you now in this TikTok. And then there's a few other good TikToks too that I think were powerful that made me think of my message this week and, and I, it, hopefully you'll glean something from it. And then I'll be back with a tool of the week. Darling, a reminder to never ever 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 feel guilty about using this simple word. No. Girl, I know this party happening tonight. We should no. We can't compensate you for your time or expertise, but no. Hey, can you work late tonight? There's a no. Oh my God, I love your hair. Can I touch? Hell no. Oh, it would be great if you could. Can we? Are you available for a quick? Well, no to the nut nut no. Now, darling, she can be a yes queen if the situation calls for it. But if it is not speaking to, lifting up, elevating her spirit, honey, it is going to be a <laughs> period, end sentence. I sometimes cannot believe how much we were taught to be afraid of being ugly. I'll just like notice suddenly, I'll step into the realization that I'm like worrying about every potential person 
that could see me from the street or from another car and what if i look ugly let me tell you something give yourself permission to be ugly because then you don't have to keep proving to yourself that you're not let yourself be free beauty and ugliness are constructs that get to close us into little boxes but we're human beings and we can look whatever freaking way we want Tiffany's not a measure of your value size not a measure of your value finances not a measure of your value doing nothing when you have a lot to do doesn't make you lazy because laziness doesn't exist that's just called resting getting over painful situations takes as long as it takes i need to just get over it and those are my reminders for today I love her. Do you guys know her? Those are my reminders for today. She's amazing. I know a lot of you aren't on TikTok at all, so you probably, you might not know her, but she's pretty, she's all over the place and I love her. She's great. And those are three wonderful little TikToks that will help you to notice your inner lotus, which is your tool of the week. Notice your inner lotus. You know, these things just come to me, so I think they're cute and I share them. And what I mean by this, notice your inner lotus, is notice that part of you that is reaching for the sun. Notice that part of you that is bioluminescent, that in that dark night, you are going to shine anyway. Notice that part of you that is leaving your seeds everywhere. Notice that part of you that is helping other species. Notice that part of you that is resilient. Notice that part of you that is growing out of the dark parts of you. Notice that part of you that is a variety of shades and colors. Notice your inner lotus, baby. Notice your inner lotus. I love you guys so, so very, very much. And this has been a really fun, really fun Sunday for me. I hope that you are able to, you know, join me again. Um, I will be here the next time you will see me will be not this Wednesday because this Wednesday I'm headed toward California where I'm going to have a week um, with my ministerial co-peers and my teacher and then I'll be back and I'll be with Global Truth Center on Sunday so if you tune in next Sunday to the Global Truth Center with James Mellon I'll be singing so I'm very excited about that and then so next Wednesday not I, there will be no holla this Wednesday but you will see me again the, the following Wednesday and then of course we will be having holla again on the 18th and um, also big shout out to anybody in the Asheville area that hears this. Please get your tickets now for the Orange Peel August 11th. I've decided I'm going to look at it as my birthday show. So if anybody, anybody who's watching has been thinking, you know, I really want to go to Asheville. I really want to check out Asheville in August because it's going to be so hot everywhere else. Come to the mountains. It'll be probably 80. It'll be beautiful. And it's going to be my birthday, my 50th birthday concert with Christy Lene, who is my birthday sister, also a cancer. And I know that it's going to be a little late. It's going to be in Leo season, but my Venus is in Leo. I've got so much fire in me. It's going to be such a great show, August 11th at the Orange Peel. Get your tickets. Get your Come on down to Asheville. Check out this beautiful city. Come see me play. Um, and then I have an announcement to make to a few people that are watching that know and have maybe been thinking that I was going one way, but I'm going another way. I am indeed. I wanted to, I wanted to make it a surprise, but I just can't. I just can't. I'm not good at surprises. I am indeed going to go to the Posse Music Fest this year. I'm so excited. Uh, I wrote to the beautiful Sue Riley saying, you know, hey, I, I really wanted to come, but I didn't get a room in time. And she said, one's coming available. And I called that day and I got a room. I have my very own room, which that's how I like to travel. You know, that way I don't bother anybody with my snoring. I have a place to retreat. Um, I'm going to be doing a pajama jam. I'll be singing at the concert. Um, on Friday night and I'm also going to be performing with Reverend Jackie at her wonderful unity of the Overland Park of Overland Park with her and Fred Albers who are, is her music director I can't wait I've got all these travels coming up big big shout out <laughs> to I know yeah I'm so excited um, big big shout out to um, yeah I know I'm so excited to spend time with you guys Lisa and Sandy I know you're going to be there um, 
Who else did I want to give a shout out to? Oh yeah, to AJ, because this month I'm traveling so much and I just want to give a shout out to my beautiful partner who helps make it possible by taking care of my animals and being here in case my mom needs her. But then after June, I'm going to be home and I'm going to be chilling here in the mountains for the summer, making beautiful art, making beautiful music. So I hope to see you at one of these wonderful things. Um, I love you all so much and I hope that you notice your inner lotus this week. Bloom, boom, bloom. You are incredible. You are nature. Nature is exploding right now. Let yourself explode. I'll see you soon. I love you so much. And again, thank you for all the love offerings that come in this afternoon. It makes me feel incredible even to get, you know, 20 bucks when I get 20 bucks, when I get 2000 bucks. It's amazing. It's all amazing. I love you. Have an am- I just burped on the truth. <laughs> or I might have burped because I had a Diet Coke. I don't know. Anyway, I love y'all. Have a wonderful day.